Hello everyone, and welcome to Sam and Gucci. Except, I'm not Sam, or Gucci, I'm Dutchy. But enough of that, today's video is going to be all about the 10 starting classes for Elden Ring, to help you pick the best class for your build. I'll be putting all of these 10 classes in 4 different categories. Physical, Magical, Holy, and Hybrids. Now just for the people who don't really know anything about the stats, I'm going to go over them really quickly. Here we go. Vigor equals more health, more fire resistance, and more poison resistance. Mind allows you to have more focus points, and also allows you to have focus resistance. Endurance is basically stamina, but it also helps against physical attacks. With strength, you can do more damage with strength weapons. You can also have a better equipment loadout, so you can have more weapons and heavier armor. Dexterity is all about light weapons. It also allows you to cast spells a lot faster, and if you fall, it will do less damage. Intelligence allows you to cast more spells, have better magic resistance, and also it scales with some weapons. Fate is all about incantations. Incantations allow you to heal people or use god abilities slash beast abilities. Arcane is a little bit of a weird one. It's basically the luck skill of Dark Souls, so you'll be able to get more items from more enemies. You will also be more resistant to instant death spells. This will be really handy in certain areas of the game, I'm sure. And it helps with sorcery and incantations too. I'm not too sure how this plays out yet, but we will see. Now that all the basics are out of the way, time to get to the classes. Let's go. Alright, let's start off with the hero. So the hero's best strength is, well, strength. If you look at it, it's one of the highest in the game. This allows you to carry around heavy weapons, because heavy weapons are usually based around strength. Heavy weapons are always optimal and taken out to your enemies quickly, because of the mass amount of damage they do. The only drawback with heavy weapons is that they usually swing very slowly, allowing the enemy to attack you a few more times. But that's where the hero's vigor comes in, so you can take an extra hit. If you do worry about running out of endurance, well, don't worry, because you get a little bit of extra endurance with the hero allowing you to swing that war axe a little more. Now for your starting equipment, you'll start off with a battle axe, and also a leather shield. The leather shield does not fully protect you against physical damage, just so you know. Alright, now we get to the class that I really want to jam as. The warrior. The warrior starts off with twin blades, which can rapidly attack a target for a lot of damage. This also means, while he's rapidly attacking, he can quickly dodge out of the way. The warrior kinda needs this as well, because he starts off with no shield. This means that you always have to dodge out of the way if you want to avoid damage. Or maybe just stun lock them, like on Bloodborne with the Blades of Mercy. The warrior also has one range ability called Stormblades. This allows him to send a gust of wind flying straight towards the enemy, dealing mass amount of damage. So now we're on to the bandit. The bandit starts off with a bow, a dagger, and a small shield. The small shield is excellent for parrying quickly, while the bow is good for range attacks, but do beware because enemies can dodge these arrows. One more thing, you can actually jump with the bow and shoot someone at the same time. Now we move on to the Vagabond. The Vagabond has excellent vigor, excellent dexterity, and excellent strength, allowing him to do a nice mixture of strength and dexterity based physical attacks. This is an excellent class if you don't know which weapons you want to go for yet. You also start off with a decent shield, a decent longsword, and a helper, which is a long axe slash spear that allows you to do damage from a longer distance. If you're going for a decent knight build, this is definitely the class to go for. Alright, now we move on to the prisoner, or as I like to call him, Mr. Pothead. I could not find any equipment stats on his sword, staff, or shield, so I just got this little picture here for you. This class will be using a lot of intelligence and exterior, meaning he will be pretty damn decent with a sword, but also pretty damn decent with his magic. Allowing you to have a nice little hybrid build between melee and magic. This is a great build for if you're not too sure what you want to do yet. It's quite nice and in between. Alright, now we get to the heavy hitting gun, the Prophet. The Prophet doesn't look like much, but he has one ability that makes him stand out above the rest, the Beast Claw. This ability does a lot of damage. 
It will one-shot most regular enemies, but when it comes to the tougher ones or bosses, it will still do a heavy hit on them. The Prophet also comes with a spear, a club, and also a rickety shield. Don't throw this rickety shield away, because it can cast a spell called Holy Ground, which allows you to heal yourself and allies around you. This is definitely the class you want to play as if you're gonna be a healer. You'll also be able to do a lot of damage, but at the same time, heal your team. Now we move on to the wizard, the mage, aka the astrologer. A lot of people will be wanting to play this class because he is a glass cannon. He's allowed to do a lot of DPS with all the spells he's got, but he has the lowest amount of health out of anyone, meaning he is a lot easier to die. But that's okay, because he has ranged abilities. As long as you can keep your mana pool up, well, your focus points, you will be able to destroy your enemies from a range without them even coming close to you. It also seems like this class will be very overpowered on horseback. Because he has the mobility on horseback, he also at the same time has the magical capability of damaging people from a nice long distance. Meaning, he has speed and damage. So while I was researching this, I realized that the Bloody Wolf is no longer in the game. The Bloody Wolf was a class that you can see in front of you right now. Also, the Enchanted Knights and the champion technically aren't in the game, but they are spiritually successor of the prisoner and the hero. But anyway, let's continue on with the video, eh? So the Confessor and the Prophet are actually quite similar. The main difference is, is that the Confessor has a lot more dexterity, up to 4 points more. The Fate is slightly lower and the Mind is as well. But this is okay. Because if you run the law on Magicka, at least you can rely on your sword still. The Confessor also comes with a kite shield and a broadsword. Alright, so first of all, sorry about the subtitles. Uh, this is the only footage I could find. But anyway, the samurai seems to come with a longbow, a sort of katana called a... Uh, w w one second. Okay, so um, it's a... Uh, a yu yuchi... Yu Yuchi Katana? Yuchi Katana? Yuchi Yuchi That that right there. Anyway, it also comes with fire arrows and bone arrows. Bone arrows are your regular arrows and fire arrow as well. Are fire arrows. And the samurai also comes with a shield, the red thorn round shield. The samurai has one of the highest dexterity in the game. This allows him to use light weapons very easily. Definitely a big recommend if you're going for a light build. Alright, last but weirdly enough not least, the Wretch. The Wretch is a class that's not strong in anything, but then to say that, it's also technically not weak in anything. This means that you can basically make any class you want out of them. This is 100% the class that you want to go with if you really want to go with your own specific specific build. You have the most amount of freedom of making whatever you want with this. We do have one more thing we need to talk about quickly, which is the gifts, also known as the keepsakes. The keepsakes are items you can start off with. I personally recommend starting off with one of these. The Crimson Amber Medallion, which increases your health. Or the Golden Seeds, which allows you to upgrade your flask, which allows you to heal more. And the Stone Ward Key. This key allows you to open up fog walls that lead to bosses, secret areas, and beautiful, beautiful loot. Now I'm not too sure if in one playthrough you can unlock every single one of these gates, so I do think starting off with this is a good idea. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video, and if you did, maybe hit that like button, and uh, hey, stick around for more uh, Elden Ring content. I'll be trying to upload as much as I can, and hopefully I'll see you guys all soon again. Bye!